Hi, I'm Prophet Nati. Thanks for listening to the Caribbean Cannabis Channel. Meditate with us every Monday as we seek to educate you on the latest developments and personal stories of those shaping the cannabis economy across the region. Now here's your program. Um, just the education and the taking away the taboo behind it is mm-hmm. what my purpose and my goal is. Um, otherwise, we just love to be around the herb, but we plant is something that we can't deny it. We can't deny plant is full, we can't deny plant is medicine. And just to get people to see that or just be acceptable of that mm-hmm. is that needs to be happening or needs to be done within Trinidad's community and the Caribbean. Correct, I definitely agree. And we hear any passion from from your voice um, already. So just tell me um, what you're smoking on this morning, if anything at all. I am actually low budget smoking. <laughs> um, I don't like to call it a name, but low budget smoking is just what I have. I actually um, got a bud from a friend of mine, which was pretty good. It's a uh, can't remember the name of it to be honest with you, but it has mm-hmm. a very nice fruity flavor. And then well, I dab, I dab, I dab, I dab. Today we are dabbing on some Nagaran Shatter. It is orange cookies. Hmm, so tasty. It is actually, it's very, um, it has a citrus kind of lemony kind of taste, which I like. Alright, the vibes, the vibes. So, yeah. when you started off by saying that cannabis has been a passion for you, so you want to tell us a little bit about how cannabis became that passion? Where, where did that journey start for you? Um, I think like most people, I started smoking cannabis. As everybody else was doing it, all the neighbors were smoking. It's like, I you should try it. And I'm like, okay, I'll try a bite. Um, I'm not that spicy person where I try a whole heap of stuff. I've never tried any other drugs. I've never tried anything like that. But I was very open. I mm-hmm. saw the, the effects that it had on them, which was just them laughing for like entire three hours and playing music and stuff. So I'm like, why not? Um, so yeah, my sister took it to a smoke and then she she gave it the confirmation that yep, yeah, Ayana, this is this is it. Let's try it. And I smoke it first time and since then I've always felt happy about it. I've never felt that this is something wrong I'm doing. Um at that point in time it was completely illegal in Trinidad. This was umpteen years ago. Um but it never felt wrong. It never mm-hmm. felt like I was harming my body. It never felt like I was harming people around me. It never felt as if I was doing something wrong morally. So from then I knew this is this is not a drug. Like, like my mother used to tell me, this is definitely something that has a benefit, has a ulterior motive, as we would call it in human world. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I just from there just went and I moved away very early. So I got to experience different strains of cannabis very early in my smoking. Um, from 18, I was learning about tips and what what is what and what strains are good for what from just being outside of Trinidad and being in places where one, it was now being accepted medically. And then quickly after that, it was starting to legalize in certain states. So I was always very open to learning about cannabis outside of Trinidad. So that got me... Well, that would put me in my, I would say that gave me my experience to understand it here on a whole different level, on a consumption from medication level, on a economist level as well, being outside of Trinidad and seeing how cannabis works outside of Trinidad, that gave me a very big head start to coming back home to trying to be part of a community that needs some sort of formality. Okay, great. Yeah, I actually had the um similar experience. I mean, I, I think most people started off, um, cause they saw their their neighbors, their their friends, um, just doing it for for the laughs and the kicks, as you as you said. But you said that you were in the states when a lot of the legalization, the criminalization was taking place. So you said that you spent a lot of your t- um teenage into early adulthood years in um America. Yeah, I left Canada. I was outside, living life, going to school, working, mm-hmm. that kind of thing, just traveling and seeing how different people react to cannabis. You saw the ones who were strictly on it for medication, 
These are the ones who were just recreationally using cannabis. Um, these are the ones who never even smoked, but they were so open to just being around people who smoke cannabis because it's different than being around somebody who drinks alcohol or who does other drugs. The vibe is just a different vibe. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, when I, I actually used to drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes in my early um, teenage years, unfortunately. Stopped now, thankfully. Um, and that is mainly due to um, switching my direct focus on cannabis. Because, as you said, it felt correct, like it suited your, your body. And I got a similar experience because I could remember drinking sometimes, smoking cigarettes. And I would just feel off, like it just never really did that for me. And, you know, in Trinidad, we have the culture of rolling our, um, our herb onto cigarettes. So that's how I really started smoking cigarettes as well. Um, because of that, that, that practice. And only when it reached to the funk, as we just call it, which is the cigarette part after the um, THC hit it, for those that are um, not familiar with what a funk is. I, I, I used to feel sick. Like, there was this intense feeling of, I don't know, it was just an off, a off put. And that, that just got me to realize that, you know, cannabis has never made me feel like that. I've always felt much better um, with that use, whether it would have been um, smoking it directly, uh, making teas, my own oils, these different things. So I was just like, you know what, let me stick with cannabis and we'll go from there. And it's, it's great to see that a lot of persons now, not just um, the older gen, but a lot of our younger persons now around my age group, interested and actually engaging themselves in the education of um, cannabis and what it can do for them and benefit them on that um, wide level. So, mm -hmm. cannabis is a multi-million dollar industry. True. We have a lot of people who are okay with making the money from cannabis. Mm -hmm. It's not really a factor of education. It's not a factor of advocacy. It's not a factor of medicinal purposes for them. For them, they just understand the market it is. They understand how much that market could benefit them financially. And they work with cannabis. So a lot of people, especially now, especially now that you see most of the world is opening up to the legalization and the actual monetization of cannabis. You see a lot of people taking it for because they know the multi-million dollar industry. Everybody knows the medicine industry, the pharmaceutical industry is a multi-million dollar. And cannabis can do almost anything any other pharmaceutical drug can. So, full stop, we just know the amount of money that can be produced through this industry. So that's why you see a lot of people jump on as cannabis lovers, as cannabis entrepreneurs, and those kind of things, because they know the money. It has nothing, a lot of it has nothing to do with the advocacy or the education behind it. That's the sad part about the industry. That's the sad, sad part about the industry. But they have the ones who will still be very much want to educate people, who want to, to spread that cannabis is not just a drug. Like, that is the biggest thing that we need to push right now, but people stop calling it a drug. It's still called a drug because it is scheduled one. It's still on one of the, it's still on the scheduling for the Drug Act in America. Mm -hmm. Right? We're actually in the, in conversations or in, Debate to take to remove it as completely remove it from the schedule the schedule list and people make it not a drug and this way you'll not be able to see different cannabis products being FDA approved and those kind of stuff. But for right now we still on a worldwide level we still have a very very big um, formality to cross before we can see cannabis being anything bigger than it is right now, especially in Trinidad. Especially here, like I think in in the region, I feel like out of the capability that we have compared to a lot of those as well who have begun the the med medicinal side as well as the adult use purpose side of it, such as Barbados, Jamaica, Saint Vincent, we we have a long way to go in terms of even starting that that process. And yeah, you touched on a very important part that I actually wanted to to talk on, and that was the the quote-unquote cannabis industry. Now, personally speaking, I don't like the use of the word industry for it. Um, reason being, it kind of gives it this mechanical feel, a kind of manufacturing sense alone when... Well, 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 cannabis can, use, can be used to manufacture everything that we see around us, our houses, our clothes, our um, 
material that mm-hmm. will grow that kind of stuff so we have to say that it's an industry because it is an industry it's not just a community of people who just want to see it do good it is something that can do good for a nation However, correct actually economy economically i think you should be labeled as an industry and this is where we in Trinidad need to understand that that is our best foot forward like no bad minded nobody in Trinidad but we are not our climate and our region our environment it's not built to grow in Dika hard we to smoke be smoking like how jungle boys and all these people be smoking green a boy and all that be smoking okay. we are in an environment where we can produce hemp that makes rope that makes concrete that makes clothing like how we used to have bauxite mm-hmm. like these Think that that's what how we as a country in Trinidad Tobago could benefit from the use of cannabis. No, correct. Um, I totally, I totally agree with you, with you there in, in that sense. But the reason why I said so because the the use of certain words, like even though what we personally know what an industry is, like to the to the general to the general person, when you hear industry, it kind of separates it from the full economy that it is, which you just described, which is not just the the manufacturing of concrete, rope, and these different things, but it also touches on the health sector, touches on spiritual use, it touches on um, just the day-to-day living of persons. So that's why I, I kind of opted personally just to not just use the word industry, but also refer to it as an economy so persons could get that greater understanding of what it can do for, for everybody. Yeah. So in terms of um, going into your own personal development and cannabis use advocacy i know that you all would have started the ladies of 420 page um mainly for that person so what really went into the creation the conception of that um that brand i just wanted something when well, my sister and i both wanted something that we we weren't ashamed to put our name to cannabis is something we have never hit whether it's illegal or not mm-hmm. um both been arrested for cannabis so we've been there, we've done that, we've, we've been through the times where it's taboo, we've been through the times where our parents are like, oh my god, you all are smoking, you all are doing drugs, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we've been through that. So for us, we wanted to have a space, a platform where we can kind of help others through that. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, okay, let me give you the education, let me, you know, let me show you it's not just about smoking weed and getting high, let me be able to tell you, okay, like, so this is, this is what happens when cannabis hits your body. This happens when THC mixes with C B D and the arched under our defect and so on, so forth and so forth. So we wanted a place and then I guess it was just easier to have one platform to it rather than doing it on my personal page or my sister's page. Mm-hmm. Um, and being the fact that we had already had Good Adam Movement, which is our clothing brand, I think it was easy for us to branch up into that to also possibly kind of um meshy to. So the two are now lifestyle brands. So whereas you will see lately the 420, we do not just education, we also do events, we do t-shirts, we do body care products. So it's a kind of a range of, of a brand. And basically we wanted this brand to be cannabis oriented because this is a major part of who my sister and I are. And now that, well, can, lady 420 came up in 2015. So it was about three years before Trinidad kind of legalized mm-hmm. for years. So it was still very taboo, but we wanted to be able to have that spot to to let it know that, okay, we okay. This spot, you're okay to come here. Nobody's judging you. We are the ones who are motivated, driven, and inspired by cannabis. Like mm-hmm. everything we do comes out of, out of a, a cannabis thought or, a, you know, something like that. Okay, good, good. So... Who who are, who's the face and who is the muscle person that does the administrative thing? How do we both of your balance balance that? Um, okay, well, we have a few brands, so it's, it's easy for my sister and I to do one do one. So my sister does the Wadada, which is the fashion stuff, and then I mm-hmm. do it to what that is. Just as how it just kinda of panned out. And then we have both our own personal page. Um yeah. Okay, great. So, nothing is done without each other's confirmation. That sister that would we like to like to see. It's a company too that my sister and I partner. So legally we have no choice but <laughs> to reach out to each other, make sure that both partners are okay with the next step forward. Okay, great. And um one of the things they touched on is in terms of if you're if you're comfortable with sharing, you said that you would have been 
arrested for cannabis. And personally, I I was too at a, a young age for for possession. Um, while well, I was in a school zone, so they had to quote unquote label it trafficking, which is a very weird, a weird yeah. concept. But anywho, yeah. So um, what was it locally in Trinidad and Tobago? Was it a way? Um, how did did it have any impact on on y'all? Okay, so the first time. Okay, well, the first first time I actually got in, I encountered um, a police situation was when I was in America. I was in Miami. Um, I'd literally just picked up an ounce of high grade. I said I wanted to smoke in the car, which I do not encourage. <laughs> and um, person, person who was with me, they're like, no, no, we wait till we choke, wait till we choke, blah, blah, blah. I obviously didn't listen. And I put it a little heavy, so we, the officer pulled us up for speeding. Uh, he smelled it. He smelled the cannabis, obviously, the car, and he asked me to step out of the car. He asked me if he said she can't, if I didn't find anything. I was like, nah, 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 because I think I, I pretty much thought I hid it away properly. <laughs> and like, okay, if I bring my dog to say she can't, like, no, the dog will find it. So he's like, just bring it to me. I never just gave it to him, but he was actually pretty cool. What what I think was the reason is because at that point in time, I was still in school, in university, I was working. Mm-hmm. So I was talking to the officer, and he knows I wasn't just somebody just sitting at home smoking weed or was something that I was selling. It was just in my personal lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he pretty much kind of left me off with a warning on a speeding ticket. Um, he maybe threw my entire ounce of wow. Money. Yeah, I said, "Watch it blow with every car that passed." But yeah, but that that was in America, and I always thought America's leniency on cannabis was so much easier than Trinidad. Mm-hmm. Come back. Trinidad now, um, rolling in a teeter. I know it's a friggin' teeter that probably threw it off. Pull up in a roadblock and the officer pulled us over. Um, that day I was kind of rushing when I jumped in the car so I didn't get time to put away my grade to hide it anyway. So he literally said, can I search your bag? And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. And he literally just, within two handfuls, he pulled out my grade. It was like five grams. Five wow. grams. And he's like, uh, yeah, getting locked up. But I think the judge was pretty cool, and she's like, don't do that again, reprimand and discharge. So I got pretty lucky. Okay. I'm well, good to hear that's it. Was good, but still, it is a very... Like, I don't understand the purpose of going through all of this height and behind, because we know the whole system has been flawed from from the get-go. Um, not right. just with cannabis, but um, generally. The whole justice system. Is correct, like, oh. correct. And but this is it. Sorry to cut it, but this is the mm-hmm. thing that I was actually trying to to, to express the other day. Um, when I got locked up for five grams, I thought that was like retarded. I thought that was the most absurd possible. This five grams is not even filling the palm of your hand, and I'm still spending time in jail. I had to go to court twice, background check, all that nonsense for five grams. Now I can have thirty grams and be cool. I am grateful for those thirty grams. Like I don't need to find a find a place where okay, we now need to go and fight to have all the weed free up in the world that we can walk with two hundred pounds on us. Mm-hmm. So I'm grateful for my thirty grams and I'm free because I was getting locked up for five. I've known people who got locked up for point five of a gram or point three of a gram as well. So I mean for us to get now thirty grams, I am so grateful for those thirty grams. Or anything like that. 
So. Okay, that's a um, an interesting perspective because a lot of the a lot of times, as you said, persons as well, at least in China, because this is the main community that I'm familiar with. It's it's a big hassle, um, for persons because they don't like the thirty gram limit. But as you said, it's yeah. As a, anybody as a person going out, leaving their house for the night, when it is you going to a party, to your friend house, and you have more than thirty grams on you, you're selling weed. Let's be real. True, if fact, yes. If all your friends smoking and all your friends have their thirty grams, you don't need more than thirty grams in your life. Mm hmm. Thirty grams. In it's good. Yeah, thirty grams is decent. Thirty grams, people can't drive home properly. I've seen. Like I've seen people who's <laughs> tolerant level is like this, with two or three grams, and they're good. So imagine a whole life. Every five, every ten people in your life have thirty grams. So I was like, that's a good life. That's a good enjoyment mm -hmm. free night. You know, even if you don't drink or nothing, thirty grams per person in a life. You're a good free night, three, five, six hours in your life. Maybe you have to return ten to go home at ten o'clock. It's good. It's the way to take is definitely enough. Um, you put it into perspective for me because, like, I, I understand the 30 grams limit. I understand that we need to start at somewhere, but I guess it's some part of you just know, like, why can't I just have that, that 200 pounds as you said? I mean, it's not a necessity, but you know, that's the tour that persons have. But if we really want to, to make it legitimate and actually make a market for it and ourselves, not just locally, but also regionally as well as internationally. Um, I guess this is, is something we have to understand at the get-go with at least this 30 grams amount. Because if we don't understand it here now, when we actually, it becomes legitimate, persons will overdo, as we say. And in this country, we know how persons are in terms of the law, etc. So if we want to make that name and that impact, then I, it does make sense for us to first understand that 30 gram limit and, and work with it, you know? Trinidad, if you don't understand what kind of country Trinidad is, you're sleeping under a rock. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand that shit only happens in Trinidad when money is passed or when some other big boy is ready to profit, it will happen. We as a young community in Trinidad, what we need to do is build a resource fund. A resource is the fact where we have as much resources as any one percenter. So now we can sit down in those meetings and say, hey, listen, I have a million dollars to invest in this economy with cannabis. What do you want to do for me? Because this is what they're doing. This is what the rituals and the whoever else and whoever, I'm not calling names, I'm not sure for sure. But mm -hmm. they know they have people already who have business plans, who have loans already, who have establishments and already built up to be cannabis producers and cannabis growers in Trinidad legally. We know this. Right? Correct. They know I just told you. Right? So we now as a community, especially the smaller ones who are more entrepreneurial, we now have to come together as a collective and get resources to be as competitive as those other in, as other, other brands. Mm -hmm. That's just how the business world is. If you don't have that capital to put in, your business is not going to be as great as this. So you can open a KFC franchise, you can have capital to open a KFC franchise, or you can be start and be a small business and be a mom and pop selling fried chicken. So it's your choice. But we know the mom and pops who sell and fried chicken is not the ones who are going to have the ability to make decisions on the price of chicken, on the price of how they sell or how it is. They just literally have to follow the, the, the standard that is set by KFC. So now we need to jump from that mom and pops mm -hmm. fried chicken establishment with weed to go to a KFC level. And that only happens with resources. As a, as a community, Collectively, we don't have the resources because you're still seeing cannabis growers and cannabis advocates, ad, ad, other advocates who get arrested and have fines and fines to pay. They can't pay themselves. They have to go for a folk go fund me. They have to have barbecues. They have to have some kind of fundraiser to now pay the fines that they have to pay the government for for their for their um for their conviction. Mm -hmm. So now, if we was a community that had funds, they won't be studying that. They don't already know they're part of this community and they will be helped out. We're going to have a fun way. Listen, we will deal with you, whether you're a registered member of the community, whether you're paying members' fees or however. We need to come a collective and have some sort of resources to be able to say anything like how big corporations could say something when it comes to changing the laws in Trinidad. That's all it is. 
And once we, we're not going to be able to do that, we as a small people, a small community that we have growing in Trinidad, it's going to stay that small business community. Just like any other small business. You have to have that investment of resources. Now, I don't know if this is you telling us that you have this in your works, but if you oh, do, but um, we definitely need to get it in your works. And a while back when cannabis now decriminalizing, I don't even want to use the word decriminalizing, I mean, we're allowed to, have, to possess cannabis. Mm -hmm. um, a group of us came together and we formed Trinidad Bigger Cannabis Society, a non profit organization that we're basically here to pool resources, which is lawyers, doctors. Anybody in the kind of industry, we come to be want to be able to have you as a resource to do something that we need to do. Whether it is we have somebody like Chris Gellock up the other day, we, he needed a lawyer, we had the resources to do that. We didn't do it, but this is what we want to have happen in the future. Okay, with but then COVID happened and then we didn't stop and life continued without thought. I think for me personally, I think we have more important things happening right now in Trinidad than to study cannabis right now. Like cannabis, we have our 30 gram fairy run with that, because they healthy with that, but we have some other things that we need to deal with as a bigger community, and the cannabis community should speak out on these other things, but... True, because it, it, will, it will impact them, whether it's directly or indirectly, and it, it all goes back to the resources and our understanding as well, which is the, the reason why we need to have the spaces such as the Ladies of 420, the Caribbean Cannabis Channel, and others where we are able to actually as sort of look out for each other because we understand how it does work and we, we don't want to see our brothers and sisters take wrong routes that affects them negatively and doesn't get the growth that one they're looking for for themselves as well as the, the community. So it, it's... um needed where we need to have those spaces for for education and advocacy not just on the cannabis at the moment right now but as well as the well with, with that being said i guess that everything in terms of events also for for ladies of 20 so i'm currently halted because i know um every year you'll have an annual um dinner or so forth uh, after this year we are doing a dinner you have any dinner okay great but yeah. well, we do it in a very very limited space mm -hmm. See me, see me. I was actually supposed. I think I did sign up um last year, but yeah, if you said it got dissolved, I think that's why I probably didn't make it. If it did happen, I can't recall. But I think I did sign up last year. Um, but yeah, okay, that's great. So I'm um, going into another aspect of of your own cannabis life, your your business, the education. Um, I know that you all would have um just recently wrote um constructed drafted the. CBD for beginners. What it is, it is a collective mm -hmm. of facts and information and studies about CBD that has been summarized. And we have the only rights to the book. Okay. We cannot share to spread the information. And what type of information, what is the inside of, of the book, like persons uh, can look forward to? Basically, the CBD 101. It's mm -hmm. basically what CBD is, how it works with the body, how it affects um, different aspects of your life, what different ailments it can be used to treat. Um, basically, it's like, okay, so for me and you being in the cannabis industry, it's not necessarily a book that we would buy for our personal interest. It'll be a book mm -hmm. buy from your daddy to, hey, mommy, daddy, read this. Okay. So these are probably help you while you're aging. See, they can probably help while you're in your aches and pains. Read this book. It's 32 pages. It's not long. It's very informative. It's simple. Just, you know. Take a read. Or it's, some, it's a book that I would probably have on my coffee table just so somebody Quick reference or something like. Okay, yeah. great, great. So, 
why why CBD though? Why didn't you decide to use um THC or CBN or any of the other cannabinoids? Um, CBD because one, the CBD is the only part of the plant that's real fully worldwide legal. Mm -hmm. Once it has less than zero point three percent THC, which is barely nothing, it's considered CBD and it's completely legal worldwide. So uh, from that level, it's the same reason why we chose to use CBD products and not THC products, so that we still we still be able to be legal worldwide. Okay. So my, there we go. Um, book wise, um, I think there's still a lot more information about THC itself that is uncovered, and bring out a book. At least for me, bring out a book like that right now. It's just it'll be too early. It'll still be in testing phase. It'll still be everything. It's still. I mean, there are certain facts about THC that is factual, hundred percent, but there's still a lot of stuff that is not. Um, you and I might experience, have experiences with THC, and we can see if this is how it works for us, this is how it works for us. But on a general scale, there are not many studies done or studies published that are hundred percent guaranteed factual about what THC can actually and how it actually physically affects. The human brain, the body system, things like that. We know how cannabinoids affect the system, but to see THC on an exact level, there's still a lot to um, to learn. True, that that does make sense. Um, because I think the first the first part person usually hear about cannabis or like you could actually research is THC, and then the second part of that is, as you said, it affects everyone differently. So it's not the same way CBD. Okay, we know that. This will help with some pain, this um, will help with inflammation. THC is more on the psychological level, which everybody's brain is wired um, differently. So, yes. uh, apart from CBD um, for beginners, um, what other resources you may direct persons who are now trying to learn more about um, cannabis, whether it be C um, CBD or THC? Um, for me, I just, I tell other people, do your own research. Mm -hmm. Uh, experience with cannabis, hear their experiences, talk to your family members. Your family members, you usually have the same blood makeup, the same chemical makeup within your system. So, how it affects your mother and your father might be very similar to how it affects you. Okay. Or how it affects your aunt and uncle might be very similar to how it affects you. Um, just do your research. Just don't let anybody give you information and just say, well, my mother said, oh, I knew this was, or this used to be, or this is this. No, forget all that. And then listen to yourself. Listen to your body, especially when you're putting things in your body. The only thing I can tell you if this is right is your body. Mm -hmm, true. So if you're taking a smoke, see how you feel, how your mind feels after. A lot of people do not like the feeling of having that overthinking happening. That's why people stay away from cannabis because they don't like that race in mind. You thought so. Yeah, some people who don't like the, the sedative effects, so they, they feel too slouchy, they feel too lazy when they smoke. So just to know your strains and know, to, to know how it affects your personal self is the best way I can tell you if you are coming into this kind of this thing. Just learn how it affects you. Read up on how it affects the general public, but when you really want to have that experience, right? be very aware of how it affects you and your surroundings. Correct. And well, the general rule for those who now beginning or want to explore it is start, start slow, start small. And as you said, see how it um, affects your body. And if you are getting the desired effects, then you keep at that, that dosage, that strain, whatever it may be. And from there, when you get accustomed, then you, you can explore. Because I, I've heard too many stories where persons start off with an edible. And the thing about edibles yeah. is that it can vary so much. Sometimes persons eat the same from the same um, pan and you yeah. get a different feeling than the next person. So you have to be very aware, especially with, with edibles. So whatever form you're taking it in, always remember to start small and, and study and go from yeah. there. Yeah? Yeah. So um, well, I got a, we got a lot of um, information inside scoops as well as not just on your own personal life, but sort of the, the vision that you that you have for not just the cannabis community um locally as i said but just on a on a global level right because again it's not just trinidad and tobago that's trying to, to deal with this it's uh many different um, places so what, what i want to 
to really get at now um it's more in terms of the the vision a little bit more of the vision um is it that you all keeping these ladies of 420 right now um locally is you all are planning on establishing or to ship to the u.s to other parts um, of the caribbean no ladies of 420 is actually registered as a, as a california company mm -hmm. okay um so eventually we want to take it to the point where we uh um cannabis Cannabis, cannabis California, uh, com makes sense, yeah, cannabis company. That's going to take years. There's a lot of compliances to apply for. That takes a lot of resources. But for right now, we're registered in California as a retail business. Mm -hmm. So we have the CBD products that are able to retail worldwide. The only issue we have had recently is that our e-commerce platform that we use to sell on our website has banned our CBD products. Wow. Yeah, That's so we can't take payment for CBD on our website. But, I mean, there's things like PayPal, Zelly, and a couple other things that people could, could use. They can ship internationally. So, as we said, CBD can be shipped internationally legally. So, yeah, just certain banking systems don't accept it. Yeah, I've, I've heard about the struggles of trying to get that um, financing in places to invest in, in America has been... Um, like Bank of America doesn't deal with cannabis mm. products. Um, there's a few small banks like Chase and those that might, but it's very, very rare. Like a lot of these cannabis uh, companies in California, they have to bank with smaller banks that do have as much benefits as Bank of America or these bigger banks would have financial-wise, loan-wise, investment-wise, um, funding-wise. But they have no choice but to deal with these smaller banks because these are the people that will take their money. Wow. All right. Well, when we come down to the end of um our episodes, we like to do a little personal trivia um with our guests. So one of the first things I want to find out is: Do you have any particular um a book, a person, an audio that you listen to for inspiration or has inspired you over the years? Cannabis. Just generally, could be cannabis. Just general uh, life. There's a um, I actually really have been motivated by how she deals with the cannabis and how she creates mm -hmm. content on cannabis. How she has bought her own house off of being a cannabis content creator. <laughs> that has me a little more pushing towards being more of a more vocal in the cannabis community. Because okay. I know that there is there's there's room for it in the economy that can, people could benefit from. Koala Puffs. That name sounds very familiar. I think I was actually listening to a podcast where she was, I guess, um, just re what sort of products or services does she offer? I have heard she literally just smokes and then she has, mm -hmm. she has her own brand, which has, she has her own cannabis brand right now. She does um, surprise boxes, smoke boxes, so you can pay like a subscription and you buy a box and you get a box every month with all her different branded pipes, bongs, dabs. All sort of stuff. Okay, but okay. She, she has um, she's actually been named one of the top fifty ladies of cannabis by High Times last year. So I mean, she's been doing it. Her brand has been building very quickly with the new last couple of years. Vibes. Well, the next question that I have um, what is your favorite food? Food. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm not much of a foodie, but um. I'm going to have to go with maybe like a roti, you know. So cliche, very cliche. <laughs> yeah, if I had a roti or pizza. Like, I'm not a foodie. I'm not a mm -hmm. high person that, that drools over good-looking food and stuff. I eat because I know mm -hmm. I have to survive. Correct, um, yeah, I understand that feeling. <laughs> yeah, so, like, give me a pizza or roti and I'll eat it. And you're cool. All right. And last question. Your favorite artist, music. Ooh. Artist without a doubt is Buzz Rock. I manage Buzz Rock, so that's my plug. Big up Buzz um, Rock. <laughs> outside of outside that internationally, I would have to go with um. There's this kind of hip hop rap guy called Toby Ingwe. I actually really am enjoying his music right now. I've never heard of him. Like yeah, I Nigerian. Yes. Nigerian. Okay. Is from Nigeria. He is from Nigeria. Okay. 
I will have to. I will have to listen to. He has a mix between R and B and hip hop, mm -hmm. but he's pro black, so a lot of his stuff is very um, uplifting for black people, which I love. I agree. Well, I'll definitely have to take him in, see how um, see the music, cause I've been leaning to different music tastes recently, and I I, I like the music that I'm hearing from, not just the mainstream that you typically typically hear. So I'll definitely well, have to he check him out. Mainstream, like he just did his performance, his first BET award performance. You know when he reached BET awards? Yeah, he did. You're not you're not um underground anymore, so he's pretty much mainstream right now, but. He has a real nice message of mm -hmm. his, his whole movement, like he's safe with his wife and his kids are always with him. So yeah. I think I know what you're spe speaking about actually, yeah. I think it's so. It's a really, really nice um, a nice vibe you see with when they when they're um Well, I and it has been a pleasure having this um discussion. Yeah. Of not just about what I what we knew about cannabis but also the sort of direction that we want to take as a community because sometimes we have this as I say, a privilege sort of feeling going with it, and we have to be mindful, be mindful of that, and keep that in check. Especially for for me, who who's now entering this this cannabis will um, who compared compared to someone such as yourself who has been in it for for umpteen years, as you as you said. So. Like she just smokes too much weed. Like so what? Next. Next, correct. That's it. That's why. That's the kind of energy that I I want to push and I want others to push. Have that confidence, um, in their cannabis use because it allows them to just be themselves, you know. And like, who who cares about you're not doing anybody anything? You're you're building yourself as well as you're you're working towards building others. So that's the the main thing. Nothing else should really should really matter there. Um, so yeah. before we do leave, um, just tell the listeners how, how they can find you, keep in touch um, with you and the movement. Okay, so I am basically Ayana Wadada across the board on all social platforms. You can also check Ladies of 420, it's ladies dot of dot 420 numbers. Um, yeah, just check out wadadamovement.com. Pretty much everybody's, everything is linked through that website. See what you want, see what you can do, or see what we can do for you. And link up. We're always open to meeting new people and exploring new avenues that can take whether it's cannabis or just anything that we're interested in at different levels. So yeah. Okay, well, thanks so much for, for joining us. Thank Hi. you very much for having me. Hi, give thanks for listening to another episode of the Caribbean Cannabis Channel. Be sure to like, share and follow to stay up to date with all the development and behind the scenes happening across the Caribbean cannabis community. Until next time, remember to meditate and educate.